Hey everyone, we're back out at Red Cliff Plantation State Historic Site and I'm Ranger Chelsea. We're here today because we are conducting GPR. If you haven't heard of GPR before, it stands for Ground Penetrating Radar. And we've got some special guests here at the site too. Stacy Young is the South Carolina Parks archeologist and Catherine Parker, an archeology span PhD student at the University of Tennessee Knoxville who has experience conducting GPR. So we're gonna to talk to them today and they're gonna to explain to us how this process is done and what it is that we're looking for. Hey Catherine, so can you explain to us what GPR is? So GPR is ground penetrating radar. Um, it's a tool that a lot of archeologists will use to see below the ground surface without actually having to dig. So what it does is it sends waves down from a little receiver box on the cart into the ground and then it measures how fast those waves come back. And so certain kind of materials can be more resistant. So things like metal or water or really hard soils or bricks, things like that, it's hard for the wave to travel through. So they reflect a lot of signal back. And then on the flip side, things like, you know, burial shafts or dugout pits, tree falls, things that are really loose, the wave tends to speed up because it's a lot easier to travel through than the rest of the soil around it. So we can look at those areas where the wave either speeds up or slows down as positive and negative spots. They're different colors on the screen. And then that will give us a shape overall of, okay, we've got a depression over here that's roughly round, or we've got maybe a brick wall over here or a pipe. So we can see really clearly not only what the shapes of things are, but where they are and what kind of material they might be. So another question, Catherine, mm -hmm. am I correct that we don't see an actual picture beneath the ground, but we were just looking at waves? So actually we do see, wait, uh, we do, the waves add up to a picture. So we do see an overall picture. Um, what the GPR is doing, it's collecting sort of like individual little like uh, profiles or lines. Like if you were to take a bulldozer and cut a little trench across the area that we're surveying, what we see on these individual lines is just like the soil profiles that you would see in that bulldozer cut. And so what we do is after we've collected all these lines individually, we load them into a computer, we stack all the lines up side by side, and then we're able to see overhead almost as if we had taken a picture of what the ground looks like from overhead view. Or if we were to do a big excavation unit and open all this area up, we would see it just like we would on the ground. All right, so this is our GPR setup. Um, if you think it looks like a jogging stroller, it does. Um, it's kind of the same basic setup. Um, and actually, I've seen these rig pretty cool. Um, but the basic parts that we have, um, right here, this red box is our antenna. It's the workhorse. It's what is sending and receiving all of the wave um, that we use to understand the data for the soil around us. And so, as you can see, the antenna is connected with this blue cable up to a screen right here um, that we call the receiver. And so what this does is it shows us and collects um, all of the data that it receives from the antenna. So it stores it all as individual files and it's also sort of like the main computer for the system. So if we wanted to change any of the settings or, you know, do any sort of editing or deleting, it's all done on the receiver. And when you're actually collecting the lines, it shows you in real time the data that it's getting back from the antenna. So you can watch it build across the screen as you go. So in order to tell how far the GPR has actually gone, because the antenna and the receiver have no idea where they are in space, um, we use what's called this encoder wheel. So right on the cart, um, attached to the left wheel, there's this smaller wheel. And what it does is it measures how many revolutions this outer wheel on the cart makes. So it knows, um, we'll calibrate at the beginning, and so if it makes 10 revolutions, it might say that 10 revolutions equals one foot. So that way we can tell exactly how far we've gone along a particular line uh, without having to actually measure each individual line. It does it for us. All right, so I'm gonna start a new line. Okay, and we're ready to start cooking. already see here that we've got a depression showing up on the screen. Ah, goodness. I love roots. 
You see the troubles with terrain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks so clear and then you push it and it's not, <laughs> but it's okay. So yeah, you can sort of see here. And if we stop it, it stops collecting. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see how this line sort of falls down here. And so that's because we're at the edge of this area where a tree probably fell down at one point and it's really loose. So because of that, we can see that the wave is moving a lot faster right here because it goes down really quick than it was over here where it was just regular ground surface. So that, that line going down is something we would look for for a depression. GPR in an area with dense vegetation requires a lot of work clearing the land so that the area can be accessible for the equipment. In addition to the GPR investigations, shovel tests were excavated on a 15 meter interval grid across a 1.3 acre area. These were used to supplement the GPR data. Shovel testing is a sampling method archaeologists use to examine subsurface deposits within an area in order to identify the locations of archaeological sites. The interval or spacing between the shovel tests and size of shovel tests may vary based on the research goals for the project. Shovel test pits are generally square or round shaped and measure at least 30 centimeters in width. The standard interval used for an archeological survey to identify sites is 30 meters. The sizes and intervals are standard in South Carolina, but may change between geographic locations, landscape conditions, and states. Archaeologist Stacy Young is sifting all of the soil through a screen. Anything that does not fall through the mesh or screen and is cultural, as in made or used by humans, is collected and bagged. Notes are recorded documenting the unique location where the artifact was found. Archaeologists pay careful attention to changes in soil colors and textures as they excavate each shovel test, and they record the depths that the changes occur. The depth, size, and physical appearance of any disturbances or artifacts are also recorded. Archaeologists Stacy and Catherine are still analyzing their data from the project, and we look forward to hearing and sharing if anything was found. <laughs>